Howdy folks, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am your host, the Mighty Bjorn, and today for you, I'm going to be talking about guns again with this Bjorn's Mighty Thoughts video. I was reading an article recently about Germany, and it seems that Germany has been looking for a new service rifle. I really wasn't aware of this until I was reading this article, that they've actually been looking for a replacement for the G36, and it seems like they're adopting the HK416A8. So the G36, for those of you who aren't aware of this, the German military has been using the G36 as their standard service rifle since, I believe, 1997. I'm just taking that off the top of my head. So late 90s, somewhere around 97, if I'm not right on the money with that. And I actually, this really piqued my interest because... Just recently, I had talked about how the Army is actually replacing the M4 with the Sig Spear, and more or less, it was about how bad of an idea that was, not saying that the Sig Spear is total crap, and if you're interested in that video, I will put a link in the video description down below, and you can hear my opinions about that, but I will forewarn you, it is quite a long video, at least by my standards. But with that being said, German Special Forces has actually been using the HK416 for quite a while now. Now, as well as the United States Marine Corps, we've the United States Marine Corps actually started adopting the M27, which is a variant of the HK416. I believe it was in the early 2000s, around 2005, 2006, I believe is when they started adopting the HK416 as their rifles. With that being said, I found it really interesting, and this is mostly because the Marine Corps, they're not getting rid of their M27s. And with that being said, SWAT teams, some SWAT teams have actually also adopted the HK416 for their rifles, as well as U.S. Special Forces has actually been rocking out the HK416 for quite a while now. Now, that being said, there's still M4s in there, so it's not like a been a total replacement. And I find that interesting that the Army is so dead set on getting getting the Sig Spear and getting rid of the M4, while like every Army in the world is getting either M4s or a variant thereof, the HK416 essentially kind of being a variant, part of the AR family, changed my mind. So here's some snippets I took from the article. I'll also post the link for the article in the video description down below so everyone can read it deeper. But these are the parts that actually interested me the most. And that's about the German government taking a significant step to buying, buying the Bundeswehr new service rifles. And they're hoping to have these things start replacing the G36 in 2024 with the new HK 416A8s. I'm not like sitting here reading this word for word for anyone who hasn't caught on. You can pause the video and read it yourself, but I'm just going to highlight a couple parts here. Now, with that being said, Germany plans to spend around 200 and, uh yeah, 209 million euros on the purchase of 100 almost 119,000 rifles. That's crazy. Has yet to be determined rather or not that this is also going to include parts, accessories, service support, etc. However, according to a report that was published by a German media outlet, the they were hoping for a contract around 273.3 million euros. So that's that's still quite a good chunk of change. But the only reason I'm bringing that, especially the numbers up, is I'm not sure how many service men and women are in the Bundeswehr right now. But I do believe if they are purchasing essentially 119,000 rifles, which is just shy of, um, yeah, that's a total replacement of the G36. They are not fucking around. They're they're going they're going full ham on this, boys and girls. Now with that being said, Okay, I do want to, before people start getting like Rage Monkey and start, you know, going batshit crazy in my comment section about, oh, well, the HK416 and the, the M4 is not the same rifle. No, there's differences, particularly in the internals. 
And I'm going to talk about that here. See, now with the M4, you have a gas block, and then essentially you have a tube from the gas block all the way back to the bolt carrier group. It's a direct impingement system. From there, the gas pretty much knocks back the bolt. Extractor come, you know, extractor pulls the old shell out. Chamber comes open, blah, 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 throws out old shell. It's a little different for the HK416. Now, I don't know if I want to say it's better. I mean, the M4s and direct impingement systems definitely has advantages that the gas piston system doesn't have, but the gas piston system also has advantages that the M4 doesn't have. Let's discuss that here. Now, with this system, what you have is, is you have a really short gas block, which is on a gas piston. The gas piston hits back an operating rod that's got uh, basically an operating rod and a sprain, smacks back into the bolt carrier group, and the bolt comes open, and it does what it needs to do. And then the, pist the sprain then returns the gas piston back to position. Now, from what I understand, reading articles and things of that nature, there's a bit more reliability in with the gas piston system because it's a cleaner system than the direct impingement. Or So that's what's being said. Take that for what you will. Now, I'm only going by articles on that, but I've also caught in some things as well from veterans that's gotten to use like M27s to say, yeah, it's, it's a bit cleaner than a gas impingement system than what they were using. Now, with that being said, though, there's flaws in this system as well. It's an expensive system. The system is a little bit more complex. There's a couple more parts there you got to clean. There's a couple more parts that could break, etc. There's more opportunity for failure in the, in the sense of parts breaking. Take that for what, it, what you will. Now, another advantage of the system, though, is apparently it is a cooler system. So with, with the direct impingement system, you got hot gas that's going all the way down a tube, and it builds up heat pretty quickly, and apparently it, it gets pretty hot. And I, I know that from using my AR. I, I have an AR-15 that's got a mid-stroke or a mid-length gas system, and it does build up heat fairly quick. Dirty wise, I really don't know because I haven't experienced it. Okay. I'm only going by what I've been able to read. Now, one thing I have heard from people who have used these rifles is that there is a bit more recoil, a bit more kick, if you will. It's not a lot, but it could make a, it could be an issue when doing sustained or some type of automatic fire. Then again, it may not. It's a situational dictation. Now, with that being said, it's heavier. It's also a heavier system because there's more to it. You have a solid rod instead of a hollow tube that's running all the way back to your, you know, your firing, your, your firing pin system, your bolt carrier group. So that's kind of an issue in itself. That being said, too, it's also a more expensive system. So there's two major things to take away from this one the gas impingement system is a cheaper system it's easier to construct it's a little easier to maintain to be honest in certain regards at least when it when it comes to parts count and it's a lighter system this system though from what i understand is a more rugged system it's more likely going to run in adverse conditions it's also a cleaner system making it less susceptible to adverse conditions. That's my understanding. Uh, it's also a cooler running system. So there you go. You got the bonuses of both. Now, with that being said, too, these types of rifles like the HK416, they do tend to come with a gas valve system, an adjustable gas valve system that can be adjusted on a fly. That's a benefit in itself. However, that being said, they also have those now for direct gas impingement systems. So, yes, it's a benefit, but it's not it's not a, a huge benefit over an M4 as you can modify an M4 or your you know, your direct impingement AR15 with a different type of gas block. 
Now, another huge advantage for the German Bundeswehr is the fact is, is a lot of the external parts are shared. They're almost all identical. Now, there are certain types of handguards that the HK416 can't use because of its piston system. But things like stocks, gas tubes, buffer springs, buffers, grips, mags, the lower receiver, all, all your Gucci man toys that you put on them, such as your optics, your pack, your grip, slings, it's all, they're all shared. And parts like this are so mass produced now because of the AR-15 market in the United States and the M4 market around the world, well, the M4 and M16 market around the world, as well as, you know, some of these parts will go on anything realistically and that's the benefits of like key mod and m lock and picatinny which and then i don't remember hk but hk has their own key system which from what i understand with the a8 it's going to be a combination of the hk key system and uh picatinny so huge advantage there for germany anyway so with all that being said just for final thoughts, you know, I've been seeing a lot about the HK416 being like a great alternative over the M4 for a while now. And from what I've seen, it is a great alternative if you're willing to spend the money. You know, like I said, it tends to be a more expensive system and not just because of the HK name for once, although HK is very proud of their work. But with that being said, I don't think Germany's making a huge mistake here. Now, it's sad to see the G36 go, in my opinion. And it's mostly because I always thought the G36 was a very cool-looking rifle. It's kind of had this sci-fi feel to it. So it's kind of sad to see it go. But in my honest opinion, it's nice to see the Bundeswehr is actually going to a better rifle, as the G36 did have issues uh, particularly with sustained fire and heat. Kind of the trunnion would get a little out of whack and would throw off the accuracy, and that's just not going to be an issue here with the HK416. Now, that being said, it's a heavier rifle, but it's also a tougher rifle. So take that for what you will. I think they're just getting a better service rifle overall. So good on them. Anyway, folks, that's going to wrap up today's video on... Germany's new service rifle. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Thank you very much for tuning in and have yourself a wonderful day.